Welcome to part one of this new video series and in front of me is everything you need to turbocharge your D-series. This has got to be one of my worst kept secrets, but part of turbocharging a Civic is letting everyone else know that you are turbocharging a Civic. And um, in this day and age, there are a lot of low quality products on the market. Um, so my objective is to show you guys how to assemble your own D16 turbo kit so that you can spend your money how you want to and where you want to on a kit which is completely tailor-made for your car. So it's gonna be a very full and comprehensive kit. Yes, you could slap that eBay kit on and you'd probably be on your way, but trust me when I say this, in the long run, you're gonna have a bad time. Don't ask me how I know. If you're new to the channel, this was my $400 EK Civic I picked up. I've given it a lot of love, I've had it resprayed, I've done your typical suspension mods, taken it to about five or six track days on the bone stock D16 Y4. And it's been a great car. I've had a lot of fun with this car and I've documented everything along the way. So make sure you go back to the channel, have a look at all those Civic videos uh, and I hope you enjoy that. Um, at the moment, I think this engine's not very happy. Um, I believe that the head's lifted, but we're gonna fix that with a turbo kit. Let's get into it. The goal here is to pick up power everywhere in the power band because the D16Y4 is quite underpowered for the chassis. So we can afford to go for quite a quick spooling turbo which shouldn't unsettle the car in the corners. Bearing in mind, this is still the stock D16Y4 and I don't have any plans to build a motor anytime soon. Uh, so starting with the first part of this kit is the Pulsar Turbo GT2860 RS, the legendary disco potato. And we're gonna do a tally on the cost of these parts this came in at $885 shipped during the Black Friday sale. So I saved myself a bit of money there. Bit of info on this turbo, you've got a GT28 core matched with a 16 millimeter billet compressor wheel. It's got a T25 flange, 0.64 AR rehousing. In my opinion, the best all rounder for the D16. I think with a built D16 should make about 350 horsepower on an American dyno. For what I do with the Civic, which is mainly circuit racing and the occasional street driving, I didn't want to go for a larger or laggier turbo than this GT28. The only alternative I considered was the newer style Garrett Turbo uh, G25 550, but we're trying to be budget conscious here so it just doesn't fit the build. Now I know turbo choices are quite personal, so you're gonna to have to size the turbo according to what you do with the car. Um, so turbo out of the way, let's look at the manifold. For the manifold, we've got to match the flange of the turbo. So that's a T25 turbo. This is a T25 G ready style cast iron manifold. Now, if you're on a budget, definitely consider one of these cast iron manifolds because compared to their welded counterparts of the same budget, cast iron manifolds are stronger and they can withstand heat better. That's off the same budget. The log style manifold also allows the turbo to sit nice and close to the block. And with a good fabricator, it can be AC and power steering compatible. Um, so best thing about these, it's really cheap. I got this one for 150 bucks. Actually, I got it for less because I bought a second one uh, for my mate. Um, so yeah, also the M8 studs. So I've got a stud and a locking nut uh, that was 40 bucks as well. Um, while we're talking about the exhaust side, let's move on to these things here. So straight off the turbo, first we have this downpipe adapter. It's a T25, T28 adapter to a three inch V-band. So I'm probably just gonna cut the V-band uh, off and then I weld in this ProFlow three inch to 2.5 inch reducer uh, to our pipe. So these pipes, uh, we've got two 90 degree bends and this is in 2.5 inches. Uh, of course, I've got a flexing system. Make sure you run one of these um, and stainless steel flanges to our catalytic converter. Uh, all up $245 for this downpipe. Alrighty, so onto the intake side. So between the turbocharger and the throttle body, we'll start with the obvious, the big black intercooler. 
Uh, now, I wanted a black one, so I paid a premium of $140 off eBay. Cheap and nasty, tube and thin. Uh, 600 long, 300 high, and about 76 mil in uh, thickness. Um, some of you might think this is quite big for the D16 motor. Uh, yeah, we could definitely go down a size in the core, but the benefit of the extra cooling far outweighs the slightly better response you might get from a smaller core. So that's why we chose this one. To connect the whole system together, you're gonna need some sort of piping. So I've gone with aluminium 2.5 inch diameter pipe to match the throttle body on the D16. And yes, you could probably go down to like a two and a quarter inch diameter pipe. You might get a bit more response, uh, but I think aesthetically speaking, uh, I think 2.5 inch diameter pipe looks a bit better uh, and it also gives us room to turn up in the future. I don't think you're going to lose that much response with this piping. Um, so all up, we have seven bends, uh, 275s, 145 and 590s. And that was $250 from my local aluminium supplier. Uh, so it's not too cheap and I understand that most people can't fabricate. So the cheapest and easiest way to go about it is then to buy a universal piping kit for Civic at Integra. So it'll come with the piping and a whole bunch of silicon joiners to fit. Uh, unfortunately with those kits, I found that you have a lot of silicon joiners and also I've seen that you have to remove the right hand side transmission mount. And I would definitely recommend keeping that mount in place. Silicon joiners from AliExpress, $50 for all five. Uh, so a lot cheaper than what you can get locally. Uh, yeah, these ones still are pretty decent quality. They're flexible, they've got a thick wall. Uh, I have used these before as well. Um, and I love buying parts from Bunnings. Black stainless steel hose clamps. Now, they never used to have these, uh, but recently I've seen them stock the black stealthy hose clamps. Um, intercooler pipe clamps from Bunnings and I bought 10 of those so six dollars each 60 bucks right here alrighty and just as important as the rest of the kit all your lines and fittings to plumb up the turbo to the engine to make this whole thing work now I've gone with Aeroflow for this build fits the budget a lot better and I've had both Aeroflow I've had Speedflow I've never really had a fitting leak now the GT2860 RS is both water-cooled and also oil lubricated which means we're gonna to have to make lines for both, water and oil feed and returns uh, back to the engine to keep this turbo nice and happy. Let's start with the oil lubrication side. Uh, we're gonna feed the turbo through one of these T's, which will go on the back of the block in the place of the oil pressure switch. Uh, so it's a 18 BSPT tapered thread, MPT over here on the side, and that replacement 18 BSPT uh, female thread we've got there. So I'm probably going to replace it with a Bosch temperature pressure sensor so that we can read some data on the ECU. Once we've fed oil through the turbo, it'll be draining through one of these Dash 10 uh, fittings uh, and then eventually back into the sump through this Dash 10 fitting. Now, just as we have pulled the pan off, sealed it, and we have no more leaks, we're gonna pull the pan off again so that we can turbo the car. So yeah, we're gonna to have to pull the pan off and then weld in this fitting. Uh, on the water cooling side, I have something really cool to show you. Now Honed have developed this coolant spacer so it sits between the head and the upper coolant neck with the two NPT ports here. So we can run sensors or in my case, we're gonna run the water feed back to the head. Uh, it saves us from having to drill and tap into the upper coolant neck, um, just makes it a lot neater. Uh, so yeah, I haven't really figured out the water feed yet. Uh, I have kind of changed my mind in the past 24 hours. So yeah, uh, we've got hose ends, we've got dash 10, dash six, dash four lines, $320 all up for just the Aeroflow goodies and $90 posted for the honed adapter. Um, so yeah, all the fittings and lines that we need for the setup. And I've almost forgotten the last part of this kit, a manual boost controller. So this one, it's nothing special from Works Engineering, it was $50. It'll literally allow you to dial in your boost. So at this point, we are sitting at $2,300 for this custom turbo kit. And you know, it's honestly, it's a pretty good deal. We've got some good quality parts uh, and parts that you wouldn't normally expect to get in a standard turbo kit. Everything we've discussed should get you running, driving, and you might even make a few pounds of boost on the stock ECU stock fuel system. But of course, we're not gonna leave it there. Uh, we obviously need to put some supporting mods in so that we can turn it up the boost 
and eventually race this car. So uh, just to the top of the head, we've got uh, a new radiator, we've got a fuel system to go in, and also we have an aftermarket engine management system. All will be revealed in the next few videos. Uh, but I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek because I don't think this video would be complete otherwise. Start off with the radiator. This is my new radiator. It's extremely thick. I got it off eBay. And I figured given that the turbo is water cooled, uh, it's gonna put more stress on the cooling system. And I just feel like the stock system might not be able to cope. So that's why I went with a larger, uh, a much thicker radiator. Okay, so just briefly on the fuel system, because we're forcing so much more air into the engine with the turbo, uh, we also need a lot more fuel to combust and make more power. So the plan is to run straight 105 octane E85 to help us make that power and to make that power safely. Um, the stock D60 injectors, the 240cc, so we're stepping it up to a 1250cc injector. It's a Bosch Aeroflow uh, modified injector uh, and it should be plenty to make the power that we have planned for this car. Uh, I'm planning to keep the stock fuel rail, the stock fuel pressure regulator and the stock fuel lines with these injectors. It should be plenty for about eight to 12 PSI. Uh, I shouldn't really be running out of injectors. Now, because we're injecting a lot more fuel into the system, we also need to upgrade the pump, which is inside the tank. Um, so I have a Warbro pump here. Um, it's not the pump we're gonna be using. Uh, this is a 460 liter pump, but I've ordered the 255, which will be enough for the setup, especially with the current power goal we have. Um, and I don't actually need to upgrade any of the wiring inside the car. So the 255 will be plug and play. Anything higher like the 340 and the 460 liter per minute fuel pumps will need like a relay kit to power the pump. Um, that's it for the fuel side. And finally, on the engine management side of things, uh, now, this is a D16Y4, so it comes with the P2K OBD2 ECU, which is essentially unprogrammable. Uh, it's not very popular at all, and I think in the States you guys have it as the D16Y7. Um, most people, what they do is they will actually go and change the engine harness from a D16Y8, which is an OBD1 harness. Then you're going to change the Dizzy as well. Uh, it's a lot of mucking around just to get um, a Honda working. What I'm planning to do is to show you guys how to use a standalone ECU. We're going back to the Howtech Elite. Um, I'm quite happy with the Howtech Elite, especially with the new software. I'm running one of these in my RX-7 as well. This is the Elite 550. Um, I've already got it running in this car with a patch loom. And to be honest, I feel like this car needs a 750. Um, so yeah, we've got to get the 550 running, no problems, and then we're gonna switch over to the 750 eventually. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is something I spent hours researching. This is an ECU header that I found off the online shelf so that we can stop sacrificing our OEM ECUs to make patch looms. Uh, and all that I'll reveal in the next few videos. That's all I wanted to show you guys in this video. This is how to put together your own turbo kit. If you have any comments or questions, leave me a comment below and I will get back to you. If you like any of the content, make sure you subscribe and keep in touch. I'm about to get stuck into this car. I'll see you guys in the next video.